Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, I know I've been gone for a long time, but I've had a lot of things change in my personal life. Don't worry, all good things, no issues. But yeah, I've not had quite as much time to focus on making some YouTube content for you guys. And that is something I definitely want to change in the near future. So hopefully I will be able to get back to weekly videos now and we can discuss some more film content. So when I was thinking about what to do with this video, I was racking my brain and I was thinking, what do I want to do? What do I want to talk about that I have a you know slightly unique perspective on? There is a ton of tutorial content on YouTube and I could add into that. I could make my own how-to videos, how to do this, how to do that. But the problem is a lot of it has already been taught by someone else probably with more experience than me. So I'm not necessarily adding anything new by entering in with that kind of video. Now, one of the things I do have, which not everyone on YouTube has, is an educational filmmaking background. I studied digital filmmaking at university a few years ago, so I do have an educational perspective on filmmaking and on all things video and film. So I thought, why not talk about something that we discussed at uni, that we had massive debates about and found really, really interesting, and you guys might as well. So let's get to it. I just want to jump in here and say this is the second time I've filmed this video. Here's me preaching to you about filmmaking techniques and what to do right and what to do wrong. The last video I didn't use my monitor, I thought I'd cut corners and just film straight onto the camera. And lo and behold, the framing was terrible. And so I managed to cut about this much of the top of my head off and it looked so amateur and just crap. So anyway, here's day two. So what I want to discuss today is the idea of an auteur filmmaker. So firstly, let's discuss what auteur actually means. Let's go to Google and get a definition. So according to Google, an auteur filmmaker is as follows. A filmmaker who influences their films so much that they rank as their author. Okay, so it turns out being an author is essentially about whether or not you have authored your film. Now you may ask, what does this mean? What does it mean to author a film? Well, from my perspective and the way I see it, this means you have had total control from start to finish on your project. Again, you might be sitting there thinking, well, obviously you're the director, but that isn't necessarily always the case. Now on a large portion of films, in fact, probably the majority of films made in Hollywood, the director is not the writer. This means that from the very beginning, there was a slight distinction in the approach and what was perceived to be the final product. Now, auteurs tend to write their own work and this means they have total ownership over the project from the beginning. This is not always a good thing as many directors are not film writers and when they try, they're not as good at it. But on the other occasion where there is someone that can do both, it does mean they maintain that level of control from the start to the finish. And I believe this is where the auteur is born. So let's take a look at some examples so I can explain to you what I mean. So for me, and definitely in the debate we had at uni, the first name that came to mind as a modern day auteur was Christopher Nolan. Now, if I say to you a Christopher Nolan film, I think most people, at least most people that follow film and the film world will know what I mean. So what is it about Christopher Nolan films that separate them and make them a Christopher Nolan film rather than just a film directed by Christopher Nolan? Slight distinction. Now, I believe the thing with Christopher Nolan's films, and this goes for other filmmakers like Quentin Tarantino too, is that most of his films share a theme, they share a tone, and they share certain characteristics. This often comes out in things like dialogue, cinematography, music, and even little things like framing techniques. Now, if you look through Christopher Nolan's back catalogue, the majority of his films share the concept of time. Whether it's in the structure, whether it's in how he plays with time in the film, or whether it's more literal, as in some of his later films, like Interstellar, Inception, and the recently released Tenet. Christopher Nolan has kind of taken that concept of playing with time and playing with how the audience perceives time and actually made it more literal in his films and made his characters have to deal with time in a similar way. Dunkirk's three interweaving act structure is a great example of this, but you'll see it across most of his films. Tarantino is the same. What are the staples of a Tarantino film? Well, you're looking at the dialogue, the, the way the characters interact with each other, the language, the violence, all of these things are shared across the majority of his work. So if we flip it around and look at someone that is not considered an auteur in filmmaking, let's take a look at someone like Ron Howard. Ron Howard has directed many, many very successful films, Apollo 13, The Da Vinci Code, A Beautiful Mind, amongst many, many more. But even if you go back through those films just mentioned, there isn't really a style, a genre, or a characteristic that I think I can link between the three. Now again, let me state this is not a bad thing. There's actually a lot to be said for someone that can make very, very different work across many different genres and still maintain a level of quality that gets them to that level. There are other examples of this too more recently. Someone like J.J. Abrams has directed many different films very, very successfully, but across very different genres. Now, I wouldn't necessarily see a film and be able to click that it's a J.J. Abrams film. The level of quality might be there across the board, but there's a lot of characteristics and things in the film that are so different that I wouldn't be able to pick it out as his film. Whereas, I don't think I could see a Quentin Tarantino film and not know that it's a Quentin Tarantino film. Now, as I was saying, there's definitely positive and negatives on both sides, and this was the debate we had at university. It seems with auteur filmmakers that they kind of pick their lane and then stay in it. That's not to say they don't do these different genres. Tarantino especially has done many different genres and created very different films, but they all share very common traits. And don't get me wrong, this is because this is what Tarantino is good at. Why break away from something that you're very, very successful at? Well, that comes down to creative choice, and some directors clearly like doing things different, and they like taking risks and doing films that 
you know, break the mold and are not something that they've done before. I think one of the risks as a young filmmaker when you're kind of learning the craft is that if you stick too rigidly into a frame and into a style of film that you want to make, you don't go out and learn different techniques, you don't go and learn different genres, and you don't pick up as much as you might do if you do it that way. I think the way I see it, true auteur filmmakers are one in a million. There are only ever a handful of these that are successful at any given time. Whereas if you look through the last 10 years of films, there will be plenty of names that have lots and lots of success across many different styles of films. I think sometimes auteur filmmakers are lauded as the best of the best, and in a lot of ways they are. But I think we need to be careful not to take away from the fact that if you take more risks, you're also more likely to fail. If we look at someone like J.J. Abrams that has a lot of different styles of films, there are some that are super successful and there are some that are not as good. Whereas a lot of people would say Tarantino's films kind of got to a point pretty early and then have sort of managed to kind of stay there. Again, this is all opinion, you might not agree, you might think Tarantino's latest films are way better than his early films, I personally think it's the other way around. But as I'm saying, if you really branch out and do something completely, completely different, you are inherently more likely to not succeed every time. Now the reason we had this debate at university was because, as I said, there's a lot of young filmmakers who kind of want to be auteurs because they're the filmmakers they look up to. And there's nothing wrong with having style or characteristics that cross your films. But I think when you're young and you're learning, it's best to go out and film a lot of different things and try lots of different styles, as this really is the best way of learning. I think a lot of the work I've done in the corporate world and in the promotional world has taught me well about clients' needs and about how different videos and different films need certain things. So what I'm saying is when you're learning, just try and be flexible, try not to be too rigid in a certain style or structure, and allow yourself to be taken into different fields and learn different things. But of course, if you are a budding auteur and you have a style and you're very, very good at it, or you believe you're very, very good at it, then of course go for it because some of these do achieve that upper echelon of filmmaking and are respected as some of the best filmmakers of all time. So to wrap up the argument for me, it kind of falls into two categories. And these are categories that go into loads of different jobs and fields, not just filmmaking. If you try too much and you don't kind of find the pocket of films that you want to make, there's a risk that you become a jack of all trades and a master of none. And there are certainly these filmmakers out there. These filmmakers are still way, way more successful than, than I am, so please don't think I'm throwing shade. I suppose a lot of this comes down to just what you're happy to work on and how strictly you want to stay into your type of filmmaking. And I think a lot of these questions get answered just over time down the line. As the more films you make and the more projects you work on, you will naturally develop a style and you'll probably find a genre or a type of film that you want to make. I'll leave you with this one really interesting question that we ask at uni. Could Ron Howard make a Quentin Tarantino film? And could Quentin Tarantino work with Disney and make a Star Wars film? Would these two directors be able to kind of flip into a different world and make a film in a very, very different style, often with a lot more constraints? I don't know, you tell me. It would be very interesting to see. Okay, so we're going to leave it there today before I ramble on too much. I hope you found this debate interesting. I know we all did at university and it was something that we talked about at length again and again and again. I'm really keen to talk about more of these kind of things. So if you want to drop some comments below, let me know what you want to talk about. Let me know if there's anything that you want my insight on. And thanks for watching. As always, please like the video, press subscribe, share it around. I'm still trying to grow this channel. So any help on that front is absolutely more than welcome. And I hope to see you next week. See you later.